What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter Katani, if you don't know that yet, and we are in the season of a new set. We are in the season of whatever this is, I think it's like Saiyan Assaults, Assault of the Saiyan, something like that. And it comes out August 2nd, you can't see it because you know the little PPG sign right there stopping it, sorry. But August 2nd the set comes out, so that means new decks. Now I'll be honest, in my own opinion of being a card player, um, I don't think this set is going to impact the format of what we have going on right now where we have victory strike and gogeta main two uh, that i have a problem with but if you take these decks to locals i think you have a great time fun time um but someone has been asking for a zamasu deck so i brought out a zamasu deck and this is my take on it let me tell you how weird this deck is building it i kept scratching my head i kept like making it and then scrapping it and like i think it was like the fourth try where i was like all right you know what just to get the video out there let's do this and explain my take so this leader is black goku i don't know why i always say black first goku black and zamasu together which is really cool um when this card attacks you look at the top five cards of your deck add one blue or yellow Black Goku or Zamasu among them, add it to your hand. Okay, so when it attacks, not bad. It doesn't have to attack a leader. Kind of cool. Um, with this deck, you don't want to be attacking leader. And if you do, you want to attack him to like four life, and that's it. But um, the strategy in this deck is to wall up. Literally wall up. And only attack battle cards. So you don't want to give your opponent any life. But more details than that in a second. Um, Awaken. If your opponent has three or more energy, you may draw one card, un choose one of your energy, switch to active, then flip this card over. Kind of cool. So you don't have to worry about having eight life uh, or four life, you know, like most of the other times uh, with leaders that like you got to self waken yourself to awaken stuff like that. One, you don't care to awaken with this leader in the very beginning. You're not rushing to do it. Um, two, when you awaken, I'm not saying it gets worse. But it gets weird. So, let's talk about that guy. This Awakened side. Fuse Zamasu Supreme Strike. When this card attacks, same concept. You look at the top five. Add a blue or yellow Black Goku or Zamasu. And add it to your hand. Cool. But it has this auto that when it attacks a leader, it loses 5k. Your, bat your leader loses 5k. So, instead of swinging with a 15 leader, you swing for a 10k. Why? Well, that's because you got to tank up on this deck. You got to just kind of not give your opponent any life. And what you're trying to do is win through his next effect, which is active main. Once per turn, if your opponent has eight or more energy, choose four of your opponent's life and place them at the bottom of the deck. That's pretty strong. That's like quadruple striking without attacking. It's kind of cool. It's it, like if your opponent is at four life, and gets to eat energy then whoo you win so that's pretty much the concept of the deck it's just no matter even if there's cards for it it's still hard to do um the little secret to this deck maybe i shouldn't say, tell you but your opponent just stops charging uh your opponent forces you to charge for them because there is cards that help you charge your opponent's energy You're like haha you, i'm gonna do this eventually but if your opponent just stops charging altogether it becomes difficult um but last effect is active main once per turn. You pay one, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards and return it to the hand. The other, like, on a similar effect like this is like Gogeta, uh, BR, where you tap two to pick one of the battle cards and put it in the bottom of the deck, which is infinitely much better than returning it to the hand. But, you know, compromise. Um, again, this leader is kind of difficult in the sense of playing. I don't know how good it's going to be, but this is the best that I can do with the concept that it's trying to do. So, let's sort it by cost, making it a lot easier. We'll start from the bottom and up. Here on the little side is the cards that I think you can try out with this leader. But this is the first take. And it's like a skeleton to help you guys when you guys are building a deck and see them inside I have. Four, Dimensional Magic is a great negate. We run no overwhelm in this deck. So, with that saying, Sparking 5 is always going to be active. So, negate, untap 2. Not bad. This plan for destruction is such a good card. If your leader card is a Black Goku or Zamasu, it gains 10,000 power for the duration of the battle. So, kind of cool. For one, you gain 10. 
but it has an effect that if there's a total of seven or more energy between you and your opponent. So seven or more. So let's say I have four energy, my opponent has three, that's seven or more. Um, vice versa, my opponent has four energy, I have three. That's seven or more. So when I activate this, it gets this nice little effect. Place this card from your drop area in your energy and rest mode. So once I play it, it gives me that 10k, awesome. It's still going to drop, but right after it goes to my energy, so it like rants me. Um, very good for ramping to get your boss monster out, but your boss monster, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's like a discard two leader, but at the same time, it's like ramp your opponent too. Also, we'll get to it in a second. It's a nice little card up here. Next, four Mafuba. Well, bad ring laser's gone. There's only one counter counter and it costs three. I don't think people are going to play it, so you're going to enjoy Mafuba now. Um, any boss monsters that are out, we don't care. Uh, we're ramping our opponent. That's the goal of this deck. We're going to ramp them so they can play their boss monster. Not bad. But when they do, we Mafuba them. So as long as it's not high to mastery, which taps down three of our energy, which we can still come back theoretically, um, we should have a good time. So four of them Mafuba. If it's too many, you just charge them. But... Trust me, come the for format coming up, Mufuba is going to be great. Now, for this card. This card, this deck might be a little expensive because I recently found out that this card's expensive. This super combo that I never got is expensive. So, when I say expensive, like we're talking about like $15 and up. Could be wrong, but that's what I check when I do the TCG because I do try to make my decks affordable. Um, this two drop has an ability. When you play this card, activate this skill. At the end of the turn, if there is a card that is both blue and yellow in your energy, so it has to be both. Not that you have a blue and then another card that's yellow. No, we're talking about a multicolor card. They're trying to support multicolor. So if you have a multiple color, multicolor card in your energy, you get this effect. Draw two cards and choose one card in your hand, place it in the drop area. Then choose one blue or yellow energy and switch it active. Okay, not bad. So if I pay two on this at the end of the turn, I theoretically only paid one, and it replaces itself. It helps me dig through my deck and find combo pieces that I want to see. Next card is going to be, I think maybe the best card that Zamasu has to offer at the moment is this Mass Reproduction. Hopefully I read it. It's a field card that permanent shadow tokens in your battle area cannot attack, but game blocker. And in this deck... We're going to try to make a bunch of blockers. Once per turn, when you play a Black Goku card in your battle area, if your leader is a Black Goku or Zamasu, play one Shadow Token with 10,000 power, zero combo cost, and 5k combo power. Not bad. So, every time we play a Black Goku, as long as this field card's on the field, we get a token that's theoretically a blocker. Pretty good. Next is this Black Goku is a two drop with the flex, so there will be no one of Cobla Lust hitting this. Uh, once per turn, choose one card in your hand and place it in a drop area. Choose one mass production from your deck and activate it. Shuffle your deck as afterwards. Um, it's going to be like a one time use. You don't want to like discard cards for no reason. The only time that like this is like super effective, which you do multiple times, is let's say you have one mass production in your hand already, and you want to cut through your deck to see better things. Um, we can discard the mass production to activate another mass production from the f deck into the field, which helps you not draw it later on in, in the game. Pretty beneficial. Uh, the reason why it's a 3-2 is because our leader ability is when it swings, it only grabs Black Goku as a monster. It doesn't grab mass production. So, in turn, we can grab this Black Goku, which is theoretically a way to grab mass production out of the deck. Cool. Not a fan of this card whatsoever. But it is a 5k combo. It is a Black Goku, so once mass production is on the field, it at least makes a blocker. Um, that's why this is at 3 and this is at 2. Trust me, not a fan of this card, but I can understand the importance of it. Next is three Beerus. You are never going to play this guy. This guy is simply blue-yellow energy. And if you already have a blue uh, multicolor card in your energy, this card comes into the energy zone untapped. Most energies come in tapped. This one will come in untapped. Let me explain. So it has energy exhaust which would normally come in tap, but then it has a permanent. If there is a card that is both blue and yellow in your energy other than this card, negate this skill 
negate this card's energy exhaust skill ability in, the, in all areas. Cool. So it comes in untapped. When you play this card, you draw one card. So if you got no other better play to do, then cool. You can play this card, draw one. It's a 15k to uh, two drop. Not bad. But uh, the purpose of this is one to set multicolor already charged because that's going to be like your turn one play. Because as you can see, there's really almost no turn one plays. It's a one card. We'll explain that in a sec. Um, two, one of our cards have Aegis. Hopefully I'm saying this right. Argus. Weird name. I'm sorry. Again, I don't know this name. <sighs> so embarrassing. I should practice before this. But um, you have to pitch a blue and yellow and you can untap two. We'll get to that card in a sec. Next is your super combo. That is a god. It's green. So it's okay. You're never going to try to charge it anyways. Um, super combo, when you combo with this card, if your leader is a god, or universe 2, you know it's funny, I had to think about that for a second, like, what leader is universe 2? There is some, but never did the C play. Um, and your life is at 4 or less, you may place one card in your hand, if you do, draw two cards, and this card gains 10 ca 10k combo bar. Not bad. Um, it's a lot like Hurudagon super combo, but this works for gods, and Zamasu is a god. Pretty cool. Next is four of this Hidden Ambition Zamasu. It's indestructible, it's a barrier, and it's deflect. It is a card that once it hits the board, other than Zeno, it's not leaving. Auto, when you play this card, choose up to one blue-black Goku card from with energy cost of two or less from your hand and play it. Automatic, just play it. So it's not bad. We have six targets. We have this guy and this dude which is just great in general. If not, we're literally just playing it because we need Zamasu on the field for our boss monster so we can fuse into it. Um, and playing this guy, you get to activate his ability. Cool. Playing this one, eh, you search uh, mass production no matter what. It's nice setups. Not in super important, but good enough. Next is three Crisis Crushers. I think going into the next format, one drops will be a thing i'm already playing crisis crusher and it's working like a charm that i'm like you know what this leader needs to tank up and needs to make a bunch of blockers and let's start nitpicking the one drops that your opponent's going to play you know play this to draw a card and do whatever it is or swing with kaba no we're not dealing with any of that crisis crusher let's go um big fan and i think it's great for this deck next is anniversary box black goku countdown of the two destruction when you have five or more energy, you can play this card from your hand without paying this energy cost. So it's free, as long as you get to five or more energy, which is pretty decent, uh, easy to do. We do have some ramp in the deck. Just because you don't see objection doesn't mean there's not ramp. You got a uh, plan for destruction and the card that we're going to talk about right next to it. Um, when you play this card, if your leader is Black Goku or Zamasu, draw one card and you can't play none of this for a duration of a turn. So once you have five or more energy and you have mass production on the field this card gets to play itself for free you draw a card and you make a token that is a blocker why because mass production anytime you summon a black goku you make a token S strategy strategies right there um and if once you have like let's say two in hand that means next turn i'm just going to play another one draw a card make a token it's just a wall up next is a great card it is barrier, which we know that word is just really strong. Auto, when you play this card, if your leader is Black Goku or Samasu, add the top card of your deck to energy. Incredible. It ramps us. Very good. But then it has a really cool ability. Or really weird ability. When you play this card and your leader card is Black Goku and Samasu, at the end of your opponent's next turn, so at the end of the next turn, you're, they reveal the top card of your opponent's deck. Cool. They reveal it. If it's a battle card, place in your opponent's energy in rest mode. Otherwise, draw one card, then your opponent shuffles their deck. Okay, so they reveal the top card. If it's a battle card, they go into their energy. So you're ramping them, which is more beneficial because our leader effect wants them to be at eight or more. If it's not a battle card, you get to draw a card. So you ramped yourself and you drew a card. Great card all around. It's a black Goku, so we make tokens. Pretty cool. Next, it is a multicolor card. Four costs, indestructible, amazing. With Aegis, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that name wrong, but with that new ability, blue yellow, that 
If, your, if it's your opponent's turn, you can activate this during the defense step by placing a card in your hand that matches all colors specific by Aegis, so blue, yellow. You can do one card that's blue, one card that's yellow, or you can do a multicolor that is blue or yellow and pitch it. Choose two of your energy and switch into active. So it's like Bean, but I can be tapped out and do this. It's pretty strong. Um, it has energy exhaust, of course, it's a multicolor card. And it's permanent is if your leader is a Zamasu card and your it's your opponent's turn, reduce the energy cost of this card to, by two. So instead of being a four drop, it becomes a two drop and it negates an attack. Two, and indestructible, it's not going anywhere. The only problem is it is 14, it's not 15. 15 would have been amazing. 14, it's not attacking any leader that's awakened. So, that's okay. Most leaders will awaken by four life. So, as long as your opponent's awake or not uh, sleeping. I, I actually found out that's the term of the front side that some people call it. They're like, oh, it's sleeping. Why do you call it sleeping? Why? Because it's, when you flip it, it's awakened. Ah, uh, quite hilarious. Um, you got to get that protein in. So, if you bring it out before they're even awakened, you're a 14 swinger attacking every turn because it's indestructible it's not going anywhere again the only way to get rid of indestructible is either toa turns it off indestructible and then kills it some way or zeno i believe those are like the two main ways i guess you can talk about like god strike breers but that's the same equivalent as uh toa so surprise um so it puts pressure again what we're trying to do is at least get our opponent down to four life and last is our boss monster, which is not really a boss monster, but it's theoretically the boss monster. It's indestructible. It's Union Patara for four blue, two yellow, which is okay. We do have multicolors. We do have yellow, so we can get there pretty easy. Energy exhaust, of course. When you play this card with Union, so when you Union Patara, now that you bring it for eight, just slam it on the board, your opponent reveals their hand, you choose two cards from it, and add it to their energy in rest mode. So it's going to help us get them to... 8 energy but it's only when you bring him out for Union Patara not every time he swings nothing like that and it's a shame because it's like a one time use for this 30k indestructible that doesn't have double strike or anything um I found it quite like eh eh it's a really cool concept but let's let's do theoretic let's just theory craft a little bit what if you're going against Kate Goku if you're going against Kid Goku, they can awaken a 6 life and become a 15k leader, which makes us more difficult to put them down to 4. And, let's say your opponent <coughs> doesn't charge after 3. They can turn 1 Kid Goku. That's why Crisis Crush is in there. Um, grab a ball. Turn 2, if you did not draw a Crisis Crusher. They can pay 2 energy bring a 30k out, which becomes a huge problem because there's no real removal in this deck. There's uh, things to annoy, there's Mafuba to stop, but no hard removal like destroy this guy unless we're awakened and we want to bounce a 30k to their hand. Um, and then let's say they're turn 3. They don't charge. We still didn't get rid of the Kid Goku or the 30k. They pay 2 more to bring out another 30k until we bring out this guy which can theoretically ramp them but let's say the top card they reveal is a four star ball then we didn't ramp them they're not a three uh oh uh oh and then we can't awaken because your opponent is not at three or more energy this is a thing that can be done um vice versa uh green broly green broly is another one that like if they're at three they can tragic awaken and put themselves back to two so, not letting us awaken, which is theoretically okay if we don't awaken. But, kind of a problem. How do we ramp them? They just stop charging. Um, there's only so many cards that's going to let them ramp. So, I found this leader as cool as a concept it is, because I think that's what Bandai was trying to go for. They're like, oh, make a wall deck, la la. Um, this is kind of like a weak arch type. Um, this is the first take I'm trying with Zamasu, because I wanted to see what it could do with this whole ramping outlook i'm a big fan of this card this card's pretty good um but old zamasu might be the play because old zamasu gets to toy around with much cooler decks but uh here on the side let's just check it out with it's a, not sideboard but ideas um you can play this 10 drop if you play the other zamasu that brings it out free the only reason it's not in this deck is because this 10 drop affects the 
energy. When it swings, it's a life, a card out of the hand, a battle card, and an energy. If we get rid of our opponent's energy, it defeats the whole purpose of doing this, playing this leader all together. So, that's why he's not in this deck. Same thing with Black Goku. We are a Black Goku Zamasu on the sleep side. We're going to call it sleep slide for now on. That's kind of cool. Well, on the sleep side, we're Black Goku. Once we awaken, we just become a Zamasu. So, you can sit tight, tank up on this side, never awaken, um, until you drop this and eat three energy. But, again, the whole point of this deck is to ramp your opponent so you can just use the effect to get rid of four of their life. So, not important in this leader. This one's pretty cool because let's say you ramp up enough with Path of Destruction or maybe Objection Main. You can ramp up to eight and swing with this, but it also gets rid of energy. Uh, two to be precise because that's dual attack. And at that point, what's the whole concept of ramping your opponent up? So, more things. Um, it it would have been that cool ability. It's like, oh, you ramp them six, you're a six, then you reduce it to two. You're not a World Tournament leader, so that won't work either. All right. Next, uh, while you're ramping, you're pretty or in defending, you're losing cards out of your hand. While your opponent probably has a huge hand, Zamasu can turn the tide completely. But if you do this, anything that has indestructible, like your Zamasus, go away, or the army of tokens that you played, they go away. So, also not a great idea. This card, though, let me tell you about this card. This is probably up there to one of my favorite ones right now because Cold Bloodless is gone, but. Any leader can use this. It's a uh, it's three costs. You gotta play blue and yellow. Uh, counterplay your the battle card your opponent is playing is played in rest mode, so it's Crusher Ball with its skill negated for duration of turn. It's Crusher Ball and Cold Blood Lust in one card. Um, then draw one card. It replaces itself. It's three things in one. It's three. Th it's Crusher Ball, Cold Blood Lust, and it replaces itself. That's three things for three energy. We respect it. Um, then if your life is at three or less, choose up to one of your blue or yellow energy and switch it active. And it stands one of the energy you use. So it becomes almost like a two cost. I'm a big fan. I understand it might not be great, but it's not a bad card whatsoever. I'm a big fan of it. I want to try to break it sooner or later, but it might be later than sooner. <laughs> Next is this Black Goku, which is interesting. When you play this card, if your leader is a Maso or Black Goku, you can play two Shadow Tokens. So when you play this with Mass Production, you get three Shadow Tokens will become three blockers. Amazing, the problem is it's three blue, which is not really a problem. It's not bad. It's something that could be just side in general. Like if you're going against an aggro deck, you're like, all right, I'm putting this in, bring out three blockers, deal with it. So it's kind of cool. I just didn't think it needed for the main board. Same thing with Objection. Uh, you want to get to 6 energy to do this, but I feel like you can do it already with this Black Goku and Path of Greatness. That's going to jump you up anyways. Um, now, if I'm wrong, forgive me. It's a thing, but it's a card that's wasting a hand. It's another event card with already a deck with 7, 15 events to add more. It's just like, ugh. So I put it on the side. Same thing with Sensu Bean. I understand Sensu Bean is probably like the holy grail of blue cards and if you're playing blue you gotta play Sensu Bean. I don't believe that. Um, I think it's great for defense. Uh, if Storm is still out then yeah, definitely. I'm gonna play Sensu Bean. But while Storm is not fully there, I'm going to enjoy a mid-range deck. Now, this was my take, just a skeleton of the idea that I think this deck can go about. If you guys can make it better, please share in the comments. Um, would I try the old school Zamasu? Eventually. It's It's been a while. It's a it's little difficult because there's so much in the set to go around. Um, I'm working on the new Broly. Truth be told, the old Broly with the new Broly card because I saw it, I was like, that's the first deck. But someone in the YouTube, I think for like three, four videos, he has comment, Zamasu, Zamasu, Zamasu. So this is me trying to give it to you. Hope you enjoyed. If you got any feedback, leave it. Leave a like. I always appreciate likes of my videos. And I'll see you guys next time.